I'm Lou Zaki and I have a company called Game Science and I've been asked to show you and describe a few things about some of the dice that we make that are unique. I was TSR's first distributor and TSR was buying the polyhedra dice needed to play Dungeons and Dragons and so I said to the guy who runs that operation I'd like to get these dice at a better price. Um, I noticed you busted them up into sets and then bagged them and all that. Can I just get them in bulk the way they are and I'll put them in bags in a, can you give me a better price? And he said, I'm tired of you trying to beat down the price. Why don't you just go make your own dice? So I went to a friend of mine who was a tool and die maker and I said to my friend, we can't beat these guys on price because they have workers who work for $50 a week and our people make $20 an hour. But what we can do is we can use the best plastic possible to make a die that will soldier on year after year. He said, well then you're talking high impact plastic and that's expensive stuff. But we paid the price to get the high impact plastic and to my delight, it turned out that many gamers were frustrated about the fact that the edges were wearing off the dice that they got in the D&D game and that they would pay extra money to get the dice that I had made. And I'm sorry I can't beat the Chinese on the price, but on the other hand, the dice that we have given people has soldiered on year after year. What a lot of people don't know about dice is that when they come out of the dice mold, all dice have a little tiny blemish on them, right like that, and that little tiny blemish is where the dice is clipped off of the casting runner. And a lot of people ignore the fact that, that you know, plastic has to flow through a casting runner before you can break the part off that you want. So what's going on is when my competitors get their dice, they have that blemish and they put all the dice in a rock polisher and they tumble them until the blemish is gone. Then they take the dice and they put them in a french fry basket and they sink the french fry basket to the bottom of a paint bucket. When they pull them out, the dice are now totally white or black, whatever the paint color was. After the dice have dried, they put them in a rock polisher and they tumble them for 24 hours to remove the unwanted exterior paint. These are three-sided dice and as you can see, they have numbers one, two, and three on the tips, but they also have the letters R, P and S, 14-sided dice. These are 16-sided dice. This next one is a 24-sided dice. This is a 7-sided dice. The other shape here is a 50-sided dice. I also have here 100-sided dice. These are 5-sided dice. And although they don't look like it, they have been play tested to assure that every dice will give you equal access to all the faces that it has. That's because I made 10 prototypes when I invented this shape, each of which was one millimeter thicker than the next. And I sent all 10 dice up to a doctor in California who, excuse me, in Canada, who teaches at a college. He teaches mathematics. And the reason I mailed these to him was because he had invented a dice testing machine which was attached to his digital camera, which had a connection to his computer that told the machine how to calculate a five when it's looking at it sideways or upside down and so forth, had a program in it. And so every morning he would put in one of my dice in his dice testing machine, and in the evening he would come and turn it off and the machine would say, okay, during the course of the day I made 10,375 rolls, of which so many were one, so many were two, so many were three, and so forth. When the testing program was over, he wrote me a letter, or he called me, and he said, you need to make these dice 13.85 millimeters thick. I was kind of surprised, because I didn't send him a 13.85, and I was puzzled about that. So I said, why 13.85? In the first place, a millimeter isn't really very thick. And in the second place, you want me to take 1 15th of one millimeter off. How can you get to such a peculiar number? He said, well, I rolled the 10,000 rolls on the 10 millimeter thick dice and I graphed its performance. Then I graphed the performance of the 11 millimeter dice, I graphed the performance of the 12, the 13, and the 14, and my graph shows me that 13.85 is the exact thickness you need to get an ideal outcome of 20 percent on each of the five faces. So that's how that dice came to be. Now you say you're not satisfied. You say you want more for your money. 
tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to let you in on the secret of how I make dice. Because nobody makes dice as fast or as pretty as I do. So watch closely, folks, because this is going to happen right before your very eyes. One, two, three. That's how fast I make dice. Now, I knew you guys weren't going to like this effect, but I didn't know you weren't going to like it that much. You see, that effect is 10 years ahead of its time, and it's just your hard luck you had to see it this afternoon. As a matter of fact, I got more rousing applause out of four presidents of the United States when I showed them that effect at Mount Rushmore than I'm getting from you guys. And they were stoned at the time. And come to think of it, they still are. Turn out the lights too, the bastards.